Hey, Bob Duffy from Intel here, and I want to show you something that's pretty cool. And this is running Stable Diffusion inside an application called GIMP, and it's powered by OpenVINO, which supports uh, Intel Arc. Um, so if you go to the Intel Insiders Discord, I've got this all well explained for you. I can also show you the uh, uh, GitHub repository of where you'd get this. But uh, first, if, if you want to do it, um, go to discord.gg forward slash Intel. That's the Intel Insiders Discord. Within there, we've got our creator channel, and I've got a discussion on this for Stable Diffusion in, in GIMP here. Um, the first thing is um, you, you can go to the website there. It also explains everything. There are instructions to install it, but what I've done here is I've added a few more instructions than they've provided here. Um, this is written a little bit more from a developer's perspective, so um, if you're not a developer, you probably should uh, have um, Git installed if you didn't, um, and PyTorch needs to be installed. So there's some very simple instructions on how to get those tools installed so that you can uh, run this. And then you'll get those instructions as said, like I said, on the Intel Insider uh, Insiders Discord here. Um, but um, it, it, it's very cool. Um, if you're not familiar with GIMP, GIMP is like Photoshop, but it's open source. So it's an image editing application. So this will allow you to generate and edit images using AI inside an image editor, which you could then take that and do more with. Uh, but you've got things like uh, segmentic segmentation supported, which will give you masking of foreground versus background objects. Um, you've got super resolution. So if you want to upscale the resolution um, of, uh, of a grainy photo, you can do that. Um, you can do style transfer. So you can, uh, you know, um, add different looks uh, to images. Um, you can do in painting, which is something that's very cool with stable diffusion. So if you want to you know, within one of your images, you want to be able to change or edit out something um, or add in sunglasses on top of a person, things like that. You can do in painting, which that will uh, do it just fine. And it's, it's pretty cool. Um, and then you've got what we typically think of stable diffusion for, which is essentially using text to describe an image and then have that image generated for you. Um, I've got examples of this um, in the Insiders Discord here. Here's an example of a portrait of a robot from the 1940s horror film taken with a 50 millimeter lens uh, at a film uh, studio uh, soundstage. And this is what it comes up with, which is it's frightening and cool at the same time. So if you're trying to create an interesting looking robot and you just weren't inspired, so maybe you're doing this for a video game um, or maybe it's concept art for a film, um, yeah, use Stable Diffusion to, to help you on the creative uh, process. Um, also, you can use it for interior design if you're trying to come up with a color palette or you're trying to come up with a, a scheme for furniture or, or design or drapery or textures that could be in a room, you know, Describe what it is that you're looking for and have a stable diffusion come up with those ideas. Uh, for cosplay or character design of a particular kind of uh, period character, it'll do that as well. Um, and just prompt away and uh, do as much as you want. Because the cool thing about stable diffusion, when you run it locally on your computer, this is free. You're not having to pay for a subscription for it. Uh, you can you can essentially uh, keep going at it. And because it supports Intel Arc uh, and GPUs, it's pretty quick. Uh, it, it, it's it's snappy uh, to say the least. So um, I'm going to give you a, a rundown of this. We're going to give this a shot. So when it's working, um, you go to the layer menu, you select Open Vino. Uh, we will do a stable diffusion prompt. When you've got that, uh, you can select CPU or GPU. We'll kick it off with GPU. Now, what I do here is let me find my notepad somewhere here. Hold on, see where I got it. Where are you, notepad? There you are. All right. Um, I went ahead and, and I, I typed in some prompts here. And uh, so with this version of Stable Diffusion, it doesn't persist the prompt. Um, so you're going to want to kind of keep your prompt somewhere. So if you want to make an edit or change that prompt, um, just keep that somewhere. So I'm just Notepad works. So I'm going to work with Notepad. Uh, so again, let's go here. Vino, Stable Diffusion. And we'll put this here. Uh, let me move this out of the way. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and clear this timer and have to remember every time I do this is to do that. So we'll uh, run inference. We'll start the timer. 
And what I noticed is um, before it starts inferencing, there's about 20 to 25 seconds or so of, of something going on. Um, and, and we'll see this on GPU as uh, our CPU as well. We'll try both of them. And then once it gets past this initial, say 25 seconds, uh, then it starts the inferencing and that happens really quickly, especially on GPU. So we should see that just about to kick off. Okay. We're started the inferencing here. Okay. And here we are. Um, all right. So this is it. So, um, that looks pretty good to me. That's a nice in interior design so we've got an interesting color palette i think i said use a neutral color palette it did that interesting that it chose black for the walls which is a super interesting look and so again if you're into interior design you're doing some decorating this may be a way to get that done ah i forgot to look at what time that was so you guys maybe roll back in the video and see when that happened what time where we were at so we will do this exact same prompt but i think it was right around a little over 30 seconds we'll do this I think it was maybe 25 seconds is where um, it moved from device to inferencing. And then it took a, a handful of seconds after that uh, in order to get it going. So we'll check this out on CPU. Let's go ahead and do the same thing. Stable diffusion. We'll paste in our prompt, but we will say CPU instead. So let's go ahead and run that inference. And um, it's going to create a, a new image every time it does this. So it'll keep all of your images uh, together there. Um, uh, let, me, let me redo this and cancel. Let's see if I can cancel. Okay. I'll let this go and we'll, we'll try it again. I didn't do the timer, but what we can see here is where this was done with whatever this is to 7.1 this is going to count up quite a bit so I'm, I'm thinking this is this is running you know about 10 seconds longer than the gpu and we can run it again to be sure okay so let's rerun that I will hit play this time. Now it seems to like it. Yeah. I, 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 oh, one thing I should tell you is whether you're running CPU or GPU, it's not going to change the quality or the content that's in that image. So if you like an image better when it was done on CPU, that doesn't mean that that's because it was done on CPU. That's just essentially a different seed, um, a different diffusion that it was taking, and that's that's defining what's in the image as well as your prompts. Um, so it really the, the the CPU versus GPU is really just going to determine the time. So let this going. Like I said, this does seem to be a bit longer than it was for GPU. I think we were at maybe 30 something seconds here. And stop okay so 55 seconds here again so we have these three images the first one was done by gpu these two were done by cpu so the image image quality you know the kinds of stuff you're getting different looks that's not dependent upon cpu or gpu but essentially that the amount of time that it takes uh, uh certainly so let's let's try uh, another prompt here and we'll go back to gpu so we'll try a portrait of a female mid-20s in renaissance clothes long red hair shot with a 50 millimeter lens studio lighting so stable diffusion go back to gpu we're gonna hit that we're gonna hit run inference we're gonna clear and go um okay so um now, let me explain the prompt a little bit, because I, I think prompting is something, it's a bit of an art that people start to learn over time. Um, notice I said a portrait of a female. I didn't say a photo of a female. I said a portrait of a female. When you use the word portrait, it tends to kind of focus in on the person. Um, when you say photo of, sometimes it can actually put a photograph of that person in your image. Okay, so here we go. Um, so that didn't take long at all. 
Um, so in comparison, so yeah, I, we're, we're in the low 30s to mid 50s versus uh, GPU versus uh, CPU on this. So here we go, uh, a nice picture here. Uh, this is a, a, a similar picture that I did. I think the difference here is I said Renaissance clothing on this one, this one I did not. Um, so, and again, the, the prompting is the key thing here. A uh, portrait seems to focus in on a person. If you say photo, you might end up with actually something that looks like a physical photo in the scene. Uh, if you put in the age, you'll get that. Something like, you know, uh, hair color or eye color or shape of face. If you want to put that in, describe the type of clothing, um, especially if you want it to be a period piece, put in a year for that type of clothing if you're looking for that. Um, often if you're saying something is happening maybe in the 20s or the 30s, your image coming back will be black and white. So set, definitely if you wanted it to be color, you could say a color portrait of a female in the mid 20s, say f from 1935, you could say something like that. Um, long red hair, um, shot with and then describe the lighting or the scene or the environment that should be in that photo when you say something like shot with and when if i didn't have this information in here if i said a color portrait of a female mid-20s 1935 long red hair it might be stylized in something that's a, a painting or a rendering and so if I wanted to look more like a photograph, I, I describe the, the photography being used. And if you want, we can give that a shot. Um, layer, Vito plugin, stable diffusion, paste that in and run that inference. And see how we do. Um, so these are some other examples uh, that I got on the living room to prompt. So uh, I think in this one, I asked it to be fancy and I gave it a color palette, uh, which is pretty cool. But let's see what we end up getting here. Okay, it should be uh, kicking off here in a half moment. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So I didn't describe the clothes, so focused in on the person, right? From 1935. So it'd be interesting. So this is where you start to get into a uh, prompt crafting, right? So uh, again, if you just, if you copy your prompts in and um, paste them in, then I can go ahead and edit this. A color portrait of female um, from, I could say a portrait of a, 25 year old female taken in 1935, long red hair, decorative clothes, shot with a 50 millimeter lens, um, Um, interior studio. Let's give that a shot. And paste that in. Run the inference. We'll skip the time. I think we got a good idea of the difference between CPU and GPU in terms of how this is calculating. Um, but it's really nice to see it run on ARC. What we can do here is uh, look at performance monitor here uh, and what's going on. I'm not sure if this would be a compute calculation or 3D calculation. So if I look at compute, we see a little bit here. It tends to be a little bit more spiky, but definitely there's some 3D going on. And my other GPU, there really is nothing going on. So while I have two GPUs, not much is happening there. And let's see what we have. Ah, look at that. Okay, so when we describe the clothes, it 
definitely change the photo. So now we have a photo where we're seeing the upper torso sort of thing. Now there's a little bit too much red going on. So you could adjust uh, your prompting there. Uh, you know, you could say neutral uh, colored clothes, etc. cetera. Um, so, so there you have it. Um, this is Stable Diffusion running inside of GIMP, uh, powered by OpenVINO, uh, which allows you to target various architectures, CPUs, GPUs, and such, including Intel Arc. So if you do this, please post results, questions, and discussion on the Intel Insiders Discord. That's discord.gg forward slash Intel. I'd love to see what you're doing and love to hear your feedback. Please provide it. I'll do my best to get it to the Intel Open Vino team. So thanks for watching and until next time, see you on Discord.